up friends and family it's your boy tricky ricky and welcome back to another edition of my two cents all right so in my previous video guys i was able to successfully upgrade my 2017 macbook pro to mac os monterey from mac os catalina all right y'all know that it is a very hard task there have been people who have tried to do so and they ended up going back to catalina either a because they would do the upgrade and they were not able to log in and set up Monterey, it kept bringing them back to Catalina, or it was because an issue with firmware. All right. So that was the reason why I did the, the previous video. So in this video, I'm going to give you all the full disclosure on how things have been going since my um, upgrading of this system. And speaking of upgrades, I did receive a question and they would like to know, will I have to do this every upgrade? The answer to that question in short form is no, only when there's a major or a new release. For example, we had OS X and then when it became Mac OS, that is when it changed. New firmware, new, all that stuff. Yes, you would have to do it again. So now we went from Mac OS to the 10 series to 11 or 12 or wherever we're at now. Monterey is Mac OS 12, by the way. So now we have the new firmware for Mac OS 12. We will be able to push security updates. All right, I, I was able to successfully update um, Motion through the Mac Store with no issues. I was able to upgrade Logic, no issues. Speaking of which, a lot of people have had issues trying to get Logic to run. And the truth is you need Logic 10.7 to run on Monterey, all right? It's asking me to upgrade my Final Cut Pro. I see no reason to do so now because I'm still seeing in several forums where people are having issues with the Final Cut Pro where it's not working to the liking, it's slow, it's constantly kicking out the beach ball and all that stuff. So I'm going to hang out where I'm at. I modified my Final Cut Pro where I added a series of plugins, um, all that stuff, blah, 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 you know? So we're gonna stay where we at. Battery life. I'm able to put the device to sleep and when I open my lid, it doesn't respond immediately. I tap my trackpad, it'll start up. I don't have any errors when it start back up. My watch, it unlocks it for me. No problem. But when I put it to sleep, let's say if I were to have an external hard drive attached or a dongle attached. When I wake up in the morning and I open my lid, my battery would drop maybe about 8%, okay? If I were to close the lid and have nothing plugged into the Thunderbolt ports, when I wake up the next morning, I only lose 2%. And even if I shut the device down with nothing plugged, open it still would lose 2% battery power. That's a given, like I said, because the hard drive was not it's not a factory component. Only factory components are gonna have all the little secret mechanisms inside of it for the system to do what it is designed to do. I guess this is Apple's way of making it harder for people um, to limit their upgrade capabilities. But overall, I feel like this is worth it. So far, I see no need to go back um, to Catalina. One more thing, the side cart. I'm going to look a little bit further to this to investigate because like I told you in the previous video, I am finding myself having to attach my iPad Pro. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> yeah, I'm having to find myself having to plug my iPad Pro directly into my MacBook Pro via Lightning to USB-C in order to use my sidecar as a second display. So I need to figure out what is the issue with the wireless portion of it, okay? So other than that, guys, I believe this is something that is worth looking into. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Sabrink. I guess that any SSD that is third party, non Apple, if you have it plugged in, this could or should work for you. Same process. Just make sure when you are doing this whole process, don't try to format the adapter. Just only format the hard drive. And make sure you tick the box that says show all drives so you can see every single drive. And when you install it, do a clean install and up and uh, restore from a time machine. And that way you're getting all the new stuff because when you already have your operating system installed, it already have this, that, and the third on there. And you're trying to upgrade something and it's trying to make all of these changes and everything is not where it needs to be. Fresh install have always worked flawless for me. So guys, that's going to sum up today's video. I do thank all those um, who commented on the previous video all the other videos if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe turn on post notifications so you don't miss when i release another video 
And I do thank all those who stayed until the end. And until we meet again, please stay safe. Hold it in the road. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay? Peace.